Hi ladies, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about DNC. I'm gonna to talk to you why I chose DNC over other options. Two, I'm gonna to talk to you about emotional state that I was in right before the procedure. Three, I'm gonna to talk to you about DNC procedure by itself. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about afterwards what happened to me, my body, and my emotional state, which was very important. I totally did not expect that. And finally, I am going to talk to you about three I don't want to say good things, but there's actually positive things about miscarriages and DNC. So please watch this video and maybe you'll find it helpful. When I found out I'm miscarried, doctor told me I have three options. First, I can wait and see. Maybe my body will naturally miscarry. Eventually my body would miscarry, but it was very uncertain when it's going to happen. And second option was to take a pill and then I would miscarry within like a few days, like 48 hours, I believe. And third option was DNC, surgical procedure of removing the remains of the baby. And my first choice was, of course, go home, wait until I miscarry by myself, or naturally, like natural miscarriage. But after a week and a half of waiting, it was getting hard here. I didn't know I can handle it anymore because really, I don't wanna get into details. I was getting really depressed because I know I'm carrying a bad dad baby. It was really hard. And after a week and a half, I did the research, how long am I going to wait? And some women waited six weeks, seven weeks. It was a really long process. And every single one of them told me they would not go through this again. And I kind of relate to it because after a week and a half, I couldn't do it anymore. So my second option was of course a pill, but my doctor told me pills do not always work. It is very painful. And at the end, even if the pill works, there is still tissue, the like remaining of the tissue that has to be removed via DNC, so that will be the next procedure. And I decided to choose DNC after probably like about two weeks. I believe your doctor will tell you the same. You're gonna have three options, what are you gonna do? It is your choice. But if you're choosing DNC, have someone with you during the procedure. I remember being very scared. I am in the hospital waiting for this procedure. I've already hooked up to everything. Oops. Um, and I have to admit that I am really, really scared. I have no idea what to expect. I didn't expect to feel that way. I haven't eaten anything and drank since last night, since midnight. And I'm just sitting and waiting. Um, and I still have an hour to go. In a moment like this, like the worst stuff is going through your head. Like you really have this thing of fear is speaking to me. So I think that's just the hardest part, the most scary part. And it would be nice if someone would be here with me, but we don't have any family here, so my husband has to stay home with the kids. So if you're ever gonna go through it, have someone with you. I think it would be helpful, it would be nice. Basically, my thoughts were that I'm going to die. DNC is performed under anesthesia, so I know they're gonna put me to sleep. When I showed up at the hospital, they gave me tons of papers to sign, including, do you have a will? If you die, what's gonna to happen to you? Questions like that. Do you have the power of attorney? What are we supposed to do with your body? Are you a donor? Look, literally, there's like piece of papers, and I'm reading this like three hours before my procedure. I'm freaking out. Nobody's there with me. So have someone with you to hold your hand. The procedure itself, it is really quick. I went to the hospital, they prepared me, they put like the IV connectors. Um, so I went in about 10-ish, I did the paperwork and I waited and then uh, my doctor got delayed. So when they drove me into the surgery room, uh, it looked like in the movies, a very bright room, lots of lights, lots of beeping, lots of computers, equipment. I was like, wow. And that really kind of freaked me out. Um, and there was like a big clock and I remember seeing 1.02 p.m. And then they put me in a different bed, they hooked me up to a different IV. I felt within like seconds I felt like lightheaded. And I, but what my doctor did was such a wonderful thing. He really held my hand. He told me to close my eyes and go to some happy place. And I did that and I was out. And next thing I remember was waking up when they drove me back to recovery room, I guess. And once I got there, it was already like 2.05. So the procedure was a little bit over an hour. I mean, I don't know how long was the procedure, but I was out for about an hour. And I didn't feel anything. It wasn't painful. I was bleeding just a little bit. 
this is how you're gonna look about two or three hours afterwards. I'm really pale, no colors, nothing fancy. Um, okay, so I'm gonna tell you what happened in the room and in the recovery room. So recovery was pretty quick. They brought me in. I remember waking up. Um, I was really dizzy and they were talking to me just to make sure that I'm mentally okay. Uh, they gave me some crackers to eat just to see if I'm gonna throw up, but I didn't. Some water to drink and apple juice and they asked me to go to the restroom and to see if there was any clots. Um, that was fine. So I was released within 30 minutes, literally 30, 40 minutes. I was out. Um, my husband picked me up with my kids and I still had stickers. I still have one, like right here. I had totally five stickers, but I had to give some to my kids, like from uh, from my chest. They were on my chest. And I also noticed when I was out, um, I have had some, some other stuff on my head, like other stickers. Okay, so what happened in the procedure? I don't remember anything. I don't remember anything. I remember getting into the surgery room. Now I'm about two and a half, three hours after the procedure. I am starting to feel a little pumping. Afterwards, I had a little difficulty walking just because I was dizzy, so I felt like I need to hold down to something. I, I could walk, but I couldn't really totally trust myself. I'm doing this, guys, because my family doesn't know, my friends don't know, and I totally felt like I'm alone in it. But then I started doing research and I posted questions on forum and there's like literally thousands of women going through it. So if you feel like you cannot talk to anybody, I think it's a great idea to actually get a word out there. So put some comments below if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. I'm sure there's like thousands of girls who will be watching and reading your questions. So if you have any questions, just shoot. I was not allowed to drive, so you're gonna have to have someone to drive you, and definitely they will not release you if you don't have someone with you driving you back. You need to have someone with you. And I felt just fine. I remember losing blood. So at some point, I think about five or six hours after the procedure, it was already evening, and I took my kids downstairs to the playground. We have like a community playground, so it was just literally, you know, a few steps. I was fine. And I was sitting, but then I remember I got up and I felt like I'm bleeding, like it's coming out like a lot. And I stood up and I felt like a bucket of blood just dripping. And that's exactly what happened because by the time when I got home, turn off if you don't want to listen to details. When I got to my bathroom, my pants were soaked with blood, like soaked all back. I don't want to get into pictures, but it was just like a lot. And then I freaked out. Um, so I took a shower and I was still bleeding, like a lot of blood was coming out. I have no idea how much blood I lost, but I felt like I was weak. And I think I was too weak to even like call 911, but I kind of got up, I went to bed, I put my feet up and I waited and it's, it went away. So that was my only like, I've never seen anything like that. It was just like a crime scene. I thought I'm gonna die. I literally thought I'm gonna die. And then I had regular bleeding, just like your very heavy period for about five days was very very heavy but then it was you know weaker or less blood and I bled for about a little bit over two weeks some women have very light bleeding for a week I did have a very heavy bleeding but it's just me some people are different but after all it triggered ovulation right away uh, on time I did get my period like right after that after DNC I know that I am no longer pregnant this is I don't have a baby inside. Even though the baby died, it was something for me to hold on to. Once I knew it's no longer there, it was really hard. And suddenly you walk down the street and you see everybody with kids. You see so many pregnant women, like I don't know, like as if I was hunted. You see everybody pregnant, it's just not you. And you come home and you cry. It was very hard. So be prepared that you will be, I don't wanna say depressed, but a kind of, whatever the word is, um, you may have this really weird feelings like you know like you're not gonna be happy you're not gonna have kids it is just hard but it you're gonna be fine it's just gonna go away after a while I think you're gonna get back to normal life I do have two kids so I really didn't want this miscarriage to take over my life I spend a lot of time with my kids and I really wanted to appreciate those two kids that I have and I was really grateful have for having family because a lot of women do not um, do not have that. So if this is your first miscarriage or our first baby, you'll be fine. Um, just pray and take care of yourself, take care of your body. You'll be okay. You'll get through it. Now, I mentioned in the beginning of the video about three good things. 
um, or positive things. I don't want to say good thing because that experience is just not a good thing at all. Um, but I think what's worth mentioning, first of all, think about it from a perspective of your body. Why did you have a miscarriage? Why your body rejected this baby? There must have been something wrong with it. So I think you didn't have to make a decision. Your body made a decision for you. Second thing I want to mention to you about DNC, DNC triggers ovulation right away. So when you have the procedure, you're going to be on your regular cycle, like right back. You're going to have a period on time within like a few, three or five weeks after DNC. So you can try for another baby. And I think the sooner you start, um, and even read the statistics, the sooner you start, your odds are really high. So don't wait six months. And if you feel psychologically that you need to wait, like you're not ready, wait. Do what you feel is right. But like I said, statistically, it is easier to get pregnant right after the miscarriage. Just do, don't wait too long. Basically, that relates to the third thing that I wanted to mention to you. After you have a miscarriage, it is easier to get pregnant. Somehow, your body probably holds on to this pregnancy. You still have your hormones. I mean, I don't know how to explain it, but statistics show that it's easier to get pregnant after the miscarriage. Whatever you decide, it is your choice. Just stay strong. You'll get through it. I went through it. A lot of women go through it. Just have someone. Have a friend. Have a family member be with you. Don't spend time alone. If you have kids, spend some time with your kids. Spend some time with your loved ones. Appreciate life, do some fun things, just take it easy, take your time. It is a process, but you will get through it. Let me know if you have any comments. I wish you best of luck, and I'll hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye.